get started now. I, I uh, want to uh, tell you about uh, the uh, perception of uh, the, the current state of carbohydrate restriction, and I'll tell you uh, some of the problems and uh, what we can do. Uh, let me start with a uh, uh, quotation from my daughter. It's uh, not really a conversation, or maybe typically one way. Anyway, she said, uh, this comes from my invitation to speak at the European so Society for the Study of Diabetes. And I was scheduled to speak in a controversy session. And uh, my daughter said, I don't understand. Why is it a controversy session? That's what our clinic tells patients for diabetes. Cut down on uh, carbohydrates. So, uh, what I actually I, uh, followed up on this in my actual talk there, and I said uh, the, the controversy is in the politics. There's no controversy in the science. And uh, I gave a presentation uh, following uh, those lines. Let me, let me start to kind of set the uh, tone for what I said with a uh, quotation from a book by Gerd Gigerentzer. Uh, called gut feeling. Gigerentzer, Gigerentzer is a statistician uh, at the Max Planck Institute. Uh, gut feeling is a book uh, which, because he's a uh, real mathematician, is it, very interesting and uh, emphasizes the point that frequently decisions are better made with less information rather than more, and that is that frequently extraneous information comes in. He illustrates this with an anecdote of a conversation with a professor from Columbia uh, was struggling over whether to accept an offer from the rival university or to stay. His colleague took him aside and said, just maximize your expected utility. You always write about doing this. Exasperated, the professor responded, Come on, this is serious. Okay, you don't need to evaluate all the time. You have diabetes and you need carbohydrates, your blood sugar will go up, you need more medication, your lipid profile will deteriorate, and you're likely to get fat. You know that. That's why you have a blue comet. It's not absolute. All the stuff, fiber, refined, high GI, good carbs, bad carbs, good fats, bad fats, they're all part of it. But the bottom line is, come on, this is serious. You know what the, uh, what the answer is. So let me give you some of the evidence bearing on this. Uh, first, let me put it in the uh, perspective of mechanism. The basic idea is that in the... Uh, the uh, current view that we have is that fat, which is the other major macronutrient that we have to deal with, has a generally passive role in metabolism. And its fate is controlled by insulin, and insulin in, in turn is controlled by carbohydrate. So if there's one main idea, it's that carbohydrate is not just a fuel, but also a control element directly and indirectly through insulin. And uh, in other words, we're talking about insulin control of the metabolic state. So what does insulin do? Well, uh, the major effect of uh, insulin is to inhibit the breakdown of uh, stored fat to fatty acids. The process uh, technically is known as lipolysis. And in addition, insulin represses the conversion of uh, protein to glucose, a uh, process known as gluconeogenesis, and the breakdown of glycogen. So a major effect of insulin is the inhibition of hepatic production. Uh, and uh, although not universally understood, uh, the uh, major problem that uh, you may have in, in diabetes and why blood glucose may be elevated is that 
uh, the liver is not responding appropriately and is continuing to produce glucose, uh, which on the face of it is why you don't want to add more on top. Insulin also stimulates protein synthesis. It's generally anabolic. And it does increase the uh, uh, recruitment of the so-called GLUT4 receptors. These are the receptors for uh, glucose uh, in uh, peripheral uh, uh, tissues. And it will uh, inhibit the production of glucagon, which, well, uh, the uh, a different kind of hormone basically antagonizes the effect of it. So the major principle has got to be that mechanism is primary. You know, any experiment you do it doesn't stand up to the basic uh, understanding. Uh, then the treatment uh, is to be preferred is the one based on it. So it goes the and again, glucose is the primary. What I'm going to emphasize is the uh, so-called metabolic syndrome. And uh, you may be familiar with this. And, and it's the uh, having the syndrome is defined as having at least three of the following uh, conditions, either overweight, I mean overweight and high blood glucose, high insulin, low HDL, the so-called good cholesterol, and uh, the uh, the presence of a small, dense LDL. LDL is considered the bad cholesterol, and this is uh, considered the most atherogenic component. And high triglycerides, that is bad in the blood, and high blood pressure. <coughs> so, the argument I'm going to make today is that uh, carbohydrate restriction is good for all of these conditions. And most of all, because it's uh, obviously the best treatment for diabetes, insofar as this is really a syndrome. That, that is, insofar as these things are all connected to uh, one physiologic state, then we have uh, the best uh, method of uh, dealing with all the problems. So, uh, let me describe a uh, study from... Uh, Jeff Bullock's lab. So we're looking at a 12-week prospective study of 40 subjects who have the metabolic syndrome. So these are going to be people who are generally uh, uh, going to be the most responsive to carbohydrate restriction, which is what you want to know. And you can see uh, that after the uh, 12 weeks, the group that's on the very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet is doing very much better than the group that's on the low-fat diet. Okay, so this is the average uh, weight loss over uh, time in kilogram. The important thing is that it's not just the averages here. If you look at the individual behavior, half of the people on the low-carbohydrate diet have done better than uh, anybody on the low-fat diet. And in fact, the average of all of the people in the low-carb diet uh, is equal to the best guy on the low-fat diet. Now, these, these are uh, isocaloric studies. They're based on uh, uh, diet recall and uh, diet questionnaires. So there's a lot of room for error. And uh, But these are big changes. I mean, the, di the difference between these uh, uh, two points is 20 pounds. So uh, it's unlikely that the whole thing can be explained by uh, uh, experimental error.